All right, let's start off today. So I'm just updating the kernel and uh, system of this machine. I don't think I'll reboot, but uh, I don't know. Let's talk about what we're going to be doing today. We're going to be, we're going to be finishing the line break code. And then we're going to be testing the line break code. Um, I haven't brought up testing before in this series. I don't think so. I've manually tested stuff by hand, but it's been tedious. Um, so the idea is when we have the line break code, we'll detach it from the TCP stack and just have our own um, code that will send data to it and see if it gets the right data out. So we shall do that. Let's get started. It's going to be kind of a chill stream today. Probably just me around. I'm not sure. Usually Kaz is here, but I guess not. Pathetic, huh? So let's run this. Get our environment set up. And let's look at where we were before. If we go to, I think it was hallow.assembly. We print any incoming packets. So we should have the IRC server running. So let's just run the bot and see if it prints the incoming packets. There we go. Nice. So we also want to send packets outgoing. And we decided on how to do that at last stream, I think. Um, we're going to have a send packet function called send new packet. And what it will do is basically trade us a buffer. Um, we send a packet, we give it a buffer um, at a length and it will send it. Of course, this isn't going to work if we don't have a packet in the first place. So we're going to have to kind of split it back up like this function does. So send new packet, same deal, but we're going to do current send packet and a send packet is just going to, I guess, return a success status. And current send packet will return the new packet. That should be fine current send packet send new packet receive new packet that makes sense so that's a kind of mirrored api there um current receive packet uh let's change that to current send packet and we will have a second buffy uh, a second variable up here called send packet so it's going to be somewhat the same thing um, current send packet, um, it will return nothing. Um, then if we do receive new packet, um, I guess that doesn't make sense, does it? Because current send packet is always going to be zero. So it should kind of be way, be around the other way, shouldn't it? Um, in fact, these should be moved. So it says receive new packet, then current receive packet. So send new packet should give us, I don't know whether we have the packet, not too sure. And then we will have, um, then we will have uh, send new packet. Then we have current send packet, which will give us the buffer and send packet is going to swap the buffer. So if we give it no packet and no length, then it won't send anything, but it will swap the buffer, I guess. It will discard it. Um, or it could just be that we do it exactly the way we're doing it right now. Um, but at the start, when we set everything up, we'll just preset the buffers. That seems like a good idea. How do we 
do that here. Current send packet, uh, receive packet. How are we creating receive packet? How is receive packet getting bar created? Um, receive packet. Okay, so MTCP creates the receive packet buffer. That makes sense. So we're going to have it so that the APIs are basically the same. So send packet, send packet, um, send new packet. We'll, you know, um, take the packet and send it. Uh, we don't actually need. Hmm? Yeah, we probably should. We want to be able to not have global state in the API. So we're going to pass it on the packet. Um, there we go. So send packet, we're going to have to initialize that when we create our socket. So we might actually put this up here and send packet is going to create um, the packet. Does that mean we don't need to have two different APIs? We could just do send packet. I mean, that should be, no, that won't give us the current one. We'll always have to send it. So no, this is the right API where we can get the current packet or we can send a packet, except it's, a, it's around the other way. So you have to run this and then you can run that. Uh, but receiving packet, you have to run the receive first, obviously, or you won't have any packets and you'll just get a null. Okay. That's just my mind trying to expand. Um, maybe it'll be big enough one day to wrap my head around this. Who knows? So how do we create a new packet uh, to send? Let's check out our bot.copy.cpp file. Um, so send line, we get an xmit buff. Okay. So we should probably have a function that creates a new packet. Um, I guess for now we'll just put it here. No, we'll put it at the setup socket function and we'll call like, uh, no, not setup socket. It, it shall be, um, set up and buffer and then we shall have um, void set up and send buffer <clears throat> and because it uses global state obviously this is our global state the socket and the packets um, we don't need to return anything um, so send buffer should actually probably be send packet. So let's rename that real quick. Um, replace all, I think. Did I just write send packet? Oh, okay. Starting to sound like, I don't know, someone that just is stock replacing stuff. So set up send pack, send packet. Yes. So when we do that, it's going to set, um, well, it's going to set sent packet to a buffer. So send packet here. <coughs> now that can actually be something different. These don't have to be the actual buffers. So, hmm. Receive packet, receive packet. So in this case, receive packet is the type returned by MTCP. So that's the actual packet. So send packet should be the, it's not a buffer. It's not a packet, it's a buffer. So yeah, I was correct. So send, so end packet and buffer, just so I can replace both cases because I'm using a uh, camel case. It's a bad habit I've picked up. Um, where you do the lower case first for the first word and then the uppercase. Um, I've since been convinced that having them both be uppercase is the best, um, but it's a bad habit for me to just do like lowercase than uppercase. 
um, because it just creates pain. Um, it means that I now have to search for two cases whenever I'm searching for things. Don't be like me as a programmer. I'm not a very good one, I don't think. So TCP buffer. TCP buffer get x mid buff. So set up send buffer. We're gonna have to update our assembly here. Current send packet and it will be current send buffer. And it will be send new buffer. Or it, no, we're not gonna use global state there. So send buffer is gonna get us a T. We're gonna set up the send buffer with some value. And that will give us back the data value. So here we go. We will be returning the data value of the buffer to the user for them to fill it out. Um, hmm. We probably should return the length of the buffer, right? When we set it up, I think we do that. Yeah, int. So send new buffer is going to get, well, that do, when we have the current send packet or current send buffer, we don't get the size, do we? Hmm. So what we shall do is add an int length variable here. And we'll pretend that the API asks for a buffer at least this length. And if it doesn't, it will return null. So the program will ask for that buffer. And then if it doesn't get it, it will return null. And then send buffer will send a packet with that length. Um, hmm. Let's see. This is all a little bit complicated because we're letting the user write directly into the buffer. And the main reason I'm doing that is to save memory because we don't have that much memory. We have like a few K and most of the memory is taken up by the buffers. Um, so I'm going to argue that this is okay. Um, send buffy here sets the length. That should be the length of what's filled into the buffer. Okay. That makes sense to me. So current send buffer int length. Um, what we'll have to do is check how big the buffer is, which we weren't doing before. So what we should do with send buffer here is send buffer should just be um, a TCP buffer. And set up send buffer. We'll set send buffer to an xmit buff. And that might be zero. Let's check the MTCP code. We haven't dived in there for a while, have we? Um, that's in TCP, I think. And the send buffer code, get xmit buff. Hey, Makoto, what's up? <laughs> I almost wrote get xmit Makoto. Uh, Misaka, whatever. I'm sorry. So that can return null, which is fine. That's exactly what we want. What is the length of a TCP buffer? I suppose we should check. Okay, so I have defined it here as Big buff? I'm not sure. It seems like past me in 2019 set this up so that it used um, just this stack of memory here for buffering. I don't know why there's a plus eight there. There's probably a good reason, but it's confusing and I didn't document it. So TCP buffer in it. Buff size. Um, and so it pretends to allocate it from the buffer. Um, temp size. Yep, so it allocates that. I guess I 
don't know how big our buffers can be. Um, <coughs> why am I writing C? I'm reading C, okay? Hi, Kaz. I'm reading C. I should probably be looking at the include files because that's technically where the API is. And it's what I can access with my code at least. So, TCP header, TCP packet, TCP buffer, data length that's filled in, everything else is mapped. Okay, but how big is the buffer? Um, I enjoy reading C. TC buffer get xmit buffer. So that's a global TC. There's a that's a static thing there. So that's a global variable. And all the static stuff is a global variable, uh, not global. It's just it's global. It doesn't make sense to me. Um, so when we do get xmit buff, it checks that there's a free buffer. And if there is, it returns xmit buffers, free xmit buffer, which is a TCP buffer, which is one of these. Um, data length. Headers. Oh, it contains TCP packet. Okay. So yes, then the buffer is apparently we get the TCP buffer. Then we go when then we look after the buffer, like the data is after the buffer. So that's a bit strange. If you wrote C, I'd enjoy reading it. So, hmm. So what's happening here is that Oh. Oh, so it's setting up xmit buffers is appointed to TCP buffers. A series of them. And in memory, those are defined as a TCP buffer. So all this and then empty space afterwards. Um, and I have low disk space. Um, I guess I'll empty the rubbish. That's fine. I'm getting a little bit confused here. 23 gigabytes used. What's using up my data? Sorry, I'm gonna have to jump over to this. Somehow I've used 23 gigabytes. Is it all the updates I have to install? It is not my feet pics. Um, app cache purge. App cache help. Bar cache. Out archives, and we'll just delete all this. Does that free up some space? It frees up 470 megabytes. Okay, tell me why we're using up so much feet. Uh, <laughs> so much feet. Um, why are we using up so much data on this computer? This VM. Does Sonic have blue feet or blue topped feet and skin colored soul? I think that's hotly debated among the community. Home. Local. Share. Trash. I have 600 megabytes in trash. Okay. On my desktop, I'm using 220 megabytes or Intel documentation. And then my downloads 
I just have a whole bunch of junk. So we might just dump a bunch of that. What's in user? User lib modules. And we have a bunch of kernel modules. Okay. I don't know how to purge old kernel modules in Debian. So let me just search that up. Removing old kernels. You can remove them by doing apt get auto remove purge. Yep. Delete that. And then we'll go over here. We'll go to downloads. We'll delete 4K big buck bunny. That can go. Firefox.temp insight. Um, that's that. Um, I think we also wanted to delete some of these docs from Intel. Um, 12 megabytes, 18, 18, 18, 5, 9, 52 megabytes for the 8086 users manual. Um, so a lot of these are duplicates and that sucks. Um, we're going to remove the no OCR ones and I guess we'll just dump the old versions of these um, books and empty the rubbish. And let's see how much we're using now. Good, we've got 1.9 gigabytes free. Great. Um, <laughs> not very helpful, is it? I thought that would remove more, but I guess it did not remove more. Are you putting Sonic feet pics in my chat? Where are the gigabytes coming from? It says I have 10 gigabytes here, then do I just have some stuff in home Jukia? I don't think so. Um, Okay, hold tight. We're going to use an actual useful program called NCDU. And we're going to look through everything on the computer. Home Jukia. X session errors is nine gigabytes? Are you kidding me? What have you been doing, X? Oh, it's the DOS box. Oh my God. DOS box is just ruining my, my X session errors. It's logging them to hell. My God. Um, okay. Is there a way to disable X session errors? Um, and this is surprising to say the least. I would not have expected X session errors of all things to uh, to not do me solid. Um, X, disable X session errors. Um, that's from May 20, May 12, 2020. There is a file called etc x 11 x session. So let's just modify that, I guess, and delete x session errors. Um, and where does x session errors go? Error file. Truncate error file if it is too big to avoid disk usage DOS. So is this a bug? Did this not work? Um, 
Huh? I guess this just isn't working. All right, well, we're just going to, maybe it got filled this session. I don't think so. Um, so, I don't like this at all, but we're just going to send it to, can we set error file to be dev null? I mean, I don't feel good that I, I don't feel like I should be modifying this. Um, you mask seven and touch it. You know what we could do? We could, uh, Alan S dev null dot X session errors. And then I guess we could reboot and see if that works. Um, what else have we got going here? User lib. Um, yeah, it's stuff I don't want to get rid of modules. Oops. Uh, lots of kernel modules. I have some kernels in there I don't need, but that's fine. Snap. Got some GNOME 3 snaps. Um, I'd rather not have that. Flatpak. I'm using Flatpak. Okay. Let's just do a quick reboot. And we'll see if the system crashes. God does not dwell on deviant art. Well, it's called deviant art. What did you expect? Okay. All right. Well, it just rotated my X session errors. Um, oof. And it moved to dot old. Okay. I just don't want any X session errors. So let's look up the second way to do this which is to disable it. And I believe it's done using an environment variable. Error. Perhaps we can set the error file thing. You made, oh, so someone made a patch Someone made a merge request to add that here. Um, the maintainer, I guess, said I'd be fine with this. And then someone, the patch creator said, does that mean it will get merged if I add documentation? And no, nothing after that. So, I don't know. I guess they wouldn't be fine with that. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to see if we can configure DOSBox to not spew logs. Of course, I don't have a way to really test that. I suppose I could. Um, let's do tail tail session errors. Um, and let's run DOSBox. And the DOSBox stuff comes up there. Um, so configuration tool, log, um, log file. Show advanced options, log. What's all these things? Let's check the configuration. Let's just save that because then hopefully it'll show us more options in the configuration. All right, so log. Log file. Okay, so we have to find the full reference file to understand what this means. Let's check that out. Log. Enable disable debugging. 
True, false, false, false. So what happens if we set log file to something that doesn't exist or something? Is there a special value that isn't documented? Let's check out the code where it checks to see if log file is being set. Log file. File where log messages will be saved to. There's also log values. There's never. And then those are log levels. Okay. So, uh, can we set a global log value for, for interrupts and stuff? What about checking this specific error? That's a good, and that's a good, um, idea. Um, so what we shall do is just search for interrupt. I don't remember what the error was. And I deleted the log file, which, um, understandably I'm now regretting. Um, if you remember what it said, then you could tell me, um, that would be great. Um, I don't want to go back to my stream. Illegal unhandled interrupt called X. I think that would be it. I mean, I, I believe that's what it was it, but let's just say log CPU never. So let's do CPU never. Um, what else would there be? I don't see any things related to interrupts aside from int 21, but that's DOS stuff. Um, yeah, so this should be fine. Okay. So we have 12 whole gigabytes for us. So let's get back here um, and stop getting distracted. Okay. So let's go to drive C um, code TCP ink TCP.h. Why did I try to run that as a C file? All right. So we have get X bar. The user can fill in the data. So get X buff and our X buff is a TCP buffer. Now that's allocated by setting up X buff. So we're going to go to TCP lib and we're going to find XMIT buffers and how it allocates them. So buff size equals size of TC buffer plus the MSS to advertise. So that would be the maximum size message. Um, and the temp size is the amount of, um, that's the allocation of it. Okay. So what is MSS to advertise? Well, what we can do is we can just set that there as our buffer size, I think. So it's size of TCP buffer plus that. So we're actually just going to take this little line here and we're going to put it in our bot code here. And we're going to write this. We're going to keep a mental note that is the size. And that's fine. So set up send buffer gives us the send buffer. And then in our assembly code, we will do current send buffer. So we probably don't actually need set up send buffer. That can just be junked. All right, so current send buffer, we're going to return, oh, it's gonna ask us for a length. 
So int max length is going to be, um, I guess this, and we're going to check if max length is, sorry, if length is greater than max length, then we're going to just return zero. Of course, um, this actually returns a uint underscore t. Is this an ASMR stream with how quiet I'm talking? Um, otherwise, it'll return the send buffer. Great. And now we just need a function that will send new buffer. Put, put the tag on. I don't want to because then people will be expect me to like have stereo ear things, ear microphones, and then I'd have to lick them. And I can't do that end program at the same time. Send new buffer has this function signature, I think. I'm not going to lick microphones. Um, actually, we're going to return send buffer plus size of TCP buffer. Uh, because we have to skip the buffer part when we give the buffer to people. There we go. Um, and then the TCP buffer that we get from people um, equals buffer minus size of TCP buffer. And that should be called buffer. And then we have the length. So this is where we set the length then send the packet off, I suppose. And then we will probably have to process the packets, huh? Hmm. So let's read our old bot code. and find how we do that. Buff data length equals line length plus one. That's because we're setting a zero on it, but that's okay. We're not gonna bother with that here. All right, so buff data length equals len. And it could be that we try and put too much in it. Um, uh, so let's just do this again. If length greater than max, then return zero. So we're just going to make sure that again, um, it's going to not try and do anything with buffers that are too big, just as a sanity check. Okay, um, data line length, and then we have socket and queue buffer. And I think that returns a value. On whether it enqueued or not. So let's just go check that. A C++ fetish? No. No, don't be weird. Um, is it in TCP or TCP SOC management? Let's search up in here. Almost should be private alternative to send, whatever. Um, and it's gonna return what? I guess if it enqueued or not. 
Let's check the code. What's NQ do? Set max and Q size. So it returns that. So we're going to have to convert these error codes. So we're going to do int ret equals sock and Q buffer. Um, and we're going to just return, I guess, different values. But let's just switch over the return value and do case TCP RC good. Um, and we'll just return zero there. Um, if it's bad, we'll return one. And if it's too big, we'll return two. Make sense? Great. So this seems fine. I mean, it makes sense to me. Um, and then after we send the buffer, we're going to want to change the buffer, which, which makes us like think about what happens if, if it doesn't send, I guess we'll only update the send buffer if it sends properly. So this seems reasonable. So what we're going to do now is add some print statements, pepper them all in. Um, should we be driving the packets here? I guess we could, right? It makes sense. If it's good, we'll also drive the packets as a treat. There we go. Um, and then we'll have a default statement, which will just, I guess, return zero, but it should also print something. They should, they should all print things. So current send buffer. We're just going to print F, um, can't send buffer to big. Or we'll just put too big with that current send buffer too big, um, send buffer too big. And then down here, this should be case negative two there. Um, too big two. Send buffer bad. Send buffer sent and send buffer WTF because that should never happen. That seems like decent code to me. Um, current send buffer size I, and then we'll put the max length there. So we're going to be adding a lot of prints and we're going to have to figure out how to do that with such limited memory. Time for the errors. Twenty-three. Spot dot CPP twenty-eight. You got me, and that means means I do have to actually cast these buffers properly. I believe that's correct. Um. Let's just run this again and see if we get less errors or more. That looks a bit more promising. 
94, conversion of return value is impossible. Return send buffer. Oh, you got me there. Um, that's okay because that's actually dead code. All right. Current send buffer has already been defined at 119. I've already, okay, so these definitely need to be down here. No, and W make. Cannot declare both a function and variable of the same name as send buffer. Why not? But that's correct, that should be send new buffer. So let's run that. W make. Still got some errors, line 95. There, that should help. More casting. All right, does the bot die? Undefine symbol current receive packet. I just deleted something, didn't I? Okay, oopsie daisies. I had a boot, I had a jukes moment. Where did current receive packet go? Did I delete it a long time ago? So I started with this, we didn't receive new packet, current send buffer, send new packet. I guess I deleted them all. Okay, well, we're gonna close without saving. We all have big jukes moments. Yeah. So current receive packet should return receive packet I think receive new packet current receive packet that should return void and that should return just this data here user data um, I don't know why receive new packet is doing that oh yeah because it's dereferencing to get the length okay um, we might just move most of that down there. Receive new packet. Yep. So current receive packet. Oh, it's returning the length. All right. Current receive packet is going to do the same thing, uh, except it's going to return user data. That seems reasonable. Check that the bot still works. Okay. So now what we're going to do is we're going to grab a buffer. So we're going to do call current send packet, I think. Current send buffer. And we're going to give it a length. So move AX. Um, we've still got, we still had AX in, uh, with DX was the length. So um, let's just push DX and then we'll pop that into AX. Um, so push DX for current send buffer. So then we'll pop AX. We don't actually need to do that, do we? Since printf isn't gonna take our argument, the DX should still be the correct value. So current send buffer is going to give us something on AX. So we need to move these two values around. Well, we need to 
move AX to a new variable. So let's put it on BX, huh? So move BX AX, and then we're going to move DX to AX. And that should give us a register set like this, where AX is length, BX is buffer. And then we should get then after calling current send buffer AX equals send buff. And that's receive buff. And DX is the length. So that seems reasonable, correct? We have our send buffer and our receive buffer. And so what we kind of want to do now is just copy everything in send buff to receive buff uh, with length here as the amount of times we do the copy. Um, and that should be fine. We'll have to read the 8086 manual for a second. Um, but yeah, and then after that, we'll do after copy, we'll do to copy, and then we shall do, I've lost my code, um, current send buffer, um, no, send new buffer, uh, buffer and length. Send new buffer, and we won't check the return code for now. So we'll do send new buffer. And for that, we need the length to be in. Uh, it needs to be AX and DX. AX will have to be the buffer, which is going to be true here. No, it won't be um, because these are all going to be changed. And DX is going to be the length. You know, if we push push these and we put the copy in its own thing and we preserve registers then this should just work fine because we have stuff we have AX in send buffer DX in length and then we get a value back in AX thick that seems to make sense unless I'm out of my mind because you have AX equals buff DX equals length um, which are probably x equals buff, dx equals length. Push just is fine. That's just going to be used by printf. That's convenient because printf um, doesn't use any registers here. It's a veridic function. So then we do. Um, we want to get. For current send buffer, we want to have the receive buffer somewhere. So like probably BX or something. Yeah, so we put it in BX. Um, and then current send buffer gives us current send buffer. Yeah, so we put the length in AX. And then we get the send buffer as the return result and we call copy buffer, um, which shouldn't do much. It should just copy and return, I guess, hopefully AX and DX equals length like that. And then we'll call send new buffer and AX equals ret. So there we go. That seems like what we will want to do. So now we have to figure out how we're going to do the copy. We should probably just do it in line here. So let's open up our 8086 um, uh, documentation. Um, we'll put it in the reference. We'll look at the reference manual here because we are doing that for assembly. There is a loop function 
which we will probably use. Um, let's search up loop. Loop. So CX does string operations and loops. So perhaps we're looking for a string operation here. It's unclear. So indexed addressing could make sense if we have dx as the length and then we have ax and bx as the... Um, if we have another register, then we could have... We could have two registers for the buffers and then have the um, two registers for the increments. Uh, well, one register for the increment, I guess, or two. I guess we'll need two, yeah. No, one. One should be fine. All right, so my mind is trying to expand a little bit here. What does the loop do? Where is loop? I need to know the loop operator. Okay, so loop decrements the count register by one and transfers if CX is not zero. Okay, so we should probably copy it backwards then, right? Start at length and copy down to zero. Makes sense? I mean, that's probably hell for cache friendliness, but this is back in the 80s and caches weren't a big, uh, I guess they were a big deal. They'd be an even bigger deal, but whatever. You got an A dot out from Clang, nice. The destination of iteration control transfers must be, okay, yeah. So, um, I mean, we could just, I don't know, it seems weird that there's no, um, I mean, I'm sure there's a math thing that turns, um, that turns the CX register, that, that takes the, okay, hang on, let me think. I'm sure there is a math way to invert the CX register in order to make it go forwards. Should we do that? Hmm. But we also might not need that. Um, because the actual, there might be other instructions for copying memory addresses. So let's just put down here, um, loop page 97, and we'll continue on. Let's look at the instructions we have for strings. Memory operands. We won't worry about that for now, although we probably will have to. Um, operands and expressions, we're looking for instructions. Data transfer maybe, um, data transfer string manipulation. So let's look for string manipulation. Byte strings and word strings. Any primitive operation can be performed repeatedly in hardware by preceding its instruction with repeat prefix. All right. 
So perhaps I was thinking of that instead of loop. So we'll read about rep in a little bit. Hardware operation controls. SI register for the source, DI for the destination. Okay. So source equals SI dest equal DI. If the DF flag is cleared, the operand pointer increase. If the DF flag is clear, the operand pointers are incremented after each operation, once for the byte and twice for word. The DF flag is set, then they're decremented. So we want to clear DF so we can copy forwards. Any of the primitive string operation instructions may be preceded with a one byte prefix indicating that the operation is to be repeated until the operation count in CX is satisfied. Ah. So, we can increment the pointers and then we can use CX to decide whether to continue. And it tests before. Um, CX prefix to check before. I'll put optional there. Repeat designates a value to compare with the ZF flag. If the primitive operation affects the ZF flag, um, yeah, so repeat doesn't seem like what we need because that's going to scan, um, it's gonna set the ZF flag. I mean, Will that does loading memory set the ZF flag? I'm not sure. Let's just write that down. Um, repeat uses ZF flag. During the execution of repeated primitive operations, the SI and DI and operation count are updated, whereas the instruction pointer will retain the offset address. An interrupted repeated operation will be correctly resumed. That's good. So we don't have to worry about interrupts. Using more than one prefix on an instruction is processor dependent. Ooh. Ooh, 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 ooh. <laughs> okay, we're not gonna do that. So the primitive string operations has move SB and move SW. So transfer's a byte or a word. We're just gonna do bytes. So move S, that's useful for us. Compare S is there to subtract to make sure that that's good for equals. Scars is for comparison. Lods is for lods. So a lot of these here are not to copy stuff, but to do something with the data so that you can have your loop depend on it or something like that, um, which is fine. Uh, from the source operation. So we're going to use mobs, I think. So mobs, um, still unclear how mobs is going to set the CX thing. Um, let's look for rep. Let's find our buddy rep.
we have to find the rep instruction. Can we find it? It doesn't seem to be here, perhaps in the index. I'm not going to become that French yet, maybe. Okay, so this should have uh, an index. Please, please, please. We have things about macros. So let's go back to the appendix at the bottom, I think is an instruction reference. I'm not going to send you my comments, Intel. Okay, rep 681, section six, page 81. Where's that? Section six. 81, so way down here. That feel when you have to read manuals because it's 1986. You know, it's called the Intel 8086 because it was made in 86. I'm just kidding, that's a lie. So sub, st, stuck, sure. Sp sar QRS. So we're at roar, roll, ret, rep, rep, repeat prefix. So while CX is not zero or ZF is not zero or whatever, um, then that's fine, I guess. So it... Okay. So... This is... This actually is good for us. Um, so what we can do is we can load up our registers and we can use mobs to just copy stuff forward but we can have CX contain lengths, which will get decremented each copy. So once it's at zero, it'll finish copying. Um, so let's try that. So rep mobs SB. Do you enjoy assembly? I don't know. Rep mobs SB. Um, and we'll have to move some stuff into the instructions. So move DX, DX, move AX, sorry, move um, SI. That'd be receive uh, buff, which would be BX move di which will be ax and then we call mob sb um and then we still should have ax and dx in whatever setup and that should be fine because we're still using the send buffer but would i start programming in it i mean yeah oh no something's happened is this destroying my x session errors no it's not okay all right, so let's try this. Copy new buffer, copy buffer, send new buffer. Copy buffer, send new buffer. Um, we're not using copy buffer because I just wrote some instructions that don't do that. Let's run this. Oh, that seems to have worked, perhaps. Let's add a print. Um, but the print format should be outgoing. So print format 
out and that one should be print format in and that should be ax dx no it should be dx then ax i believe you're chewing on plastics how do you stop um you just might not be able to it might not be possible Oops, so I was right with AX and DX. Why is that? AX is the send buffer, and this would mean it would be the second value. Yeah, okay, that's, that's the string. So let's run wmake. Let's run the bot. Outgoing 70. And it doesn't show the buffer. That's not good, is it? Um, current send buffer, size 536. Five, three, six. Current send buffer. Max length is 536. This should be length. And outgoing 70 is not sending because... No. We shouldn't have changed the, the string. Hmm. Have I copied it backwards? Have I confused my source and destination? Let's see. This will just make garbage, if anything. So let's W make this and then we'll go bot. I mean, that didn't do anything different, really. Um, that is kind of disappointing. So it seems like move SB is not doing anything. Why is that? Um, we should probably break open a cold debugger with the boys. Um, of course, we are assuming that we have a packet here. So... Oh no, we will always have a packet because that is blocking. Um, so, we have a packet. Let's try and read through this so I don't have to break out the debugger. Current send buffer should give us a send buffer and the length. No, just the send buffer. DX is the length and BX is the receive buffer. So SI is going to be AX. Sorry, AX is going to go into SI which is the send buffer, which is the destination. So that's wrong, but I think I just changed that. Um, CX should be, wait, what? Yes, that should be BX. And CX, so that should be fine. And let's try and run the bot now. So it's not writing anything. So what we shall do is perhaps open Wireshark and look at our local host packets. And it's strange because this is hanging when I do Alt X. So I'm a bit concerned about that. So let's do bot. So does it send a packet? So response notice, send, length 70, length 54. So is it even getting the, no, it's not getting the size correct either. Um, the incoming buffer is 54 and the send buffer is 70. So it could be that the bot code here is actually just hard broken. All right. So we get our packet, 
And sorry, I'm going to have to open DOSBox again. Just to read. So incoming 54. Then, so we definitely have length 54 there. There's definitely 54. 54 is correct. Um, DX would be the length, I believe. That would make sense. And then, what the hell is this? Why are we moving the buffer there? Why are we overriding DX there? Oh, yeah, what? No, no, wait, that's, hmm, okay. This makes no sense. You can sleep, no problem. Go have a sleep, I'm glad you were here. So AX equals buff, DX equals length. So BX can be the buff and DX is going to remain unchanged. Current send buffer size 70. Why we got that? Current send buffer, so AX should be the length. Oh, so it should be moved AX length, uh, DX. I see. Let's try that again. So the size is correct now. That's good. Um, so let's just double check what we have here. So we call current send buffer and that sets AX to send buffer. BX is still at receive buffer and DX is still at length. So SI, we're going to do for this, SI is going to be the receive buffer, which is wrong. Should be DI. Source buffer, source buffer, source is, no, destination is going to be the current one. And the source is going to be BX. So that was correct. So BX is the receive buffer and that's the source. AX is going to be the send buffer. And then CX is going to be the length there. And that should be fine. And I have no idea why it's hanging when it's doing Alt X quitting. Is this because perhaps where returning zero in receive new packet. Um, and we're not actually quitting. That could be true. So do check that this actually quits. Yep. W make bot. So it's definitely not copying, I don't think. Response notice. And it's not getting that packet either. So it's dropping packets too. That's not good. Um, it should be getting packets, but it's not. It's actually dropping that packet. Okay. So that's a, that's a, that's a, uh, uh oh. So let's try capturing this again. But so it queries the DNS response request VPN SS 
So that looks like it hasn't been filled in at all. So what does rep do? Um, it should be copying stuff, but it is not. That ain't good. And on top of that, we're not getting more packets. So we have two bugs here. Let's focus on what we're doing now. Um, and it's also hanging, which is probably because um, there's packets queued, maybe. I'm not too sure. Dropping packets. So let's open this up in WD. You believe in me? That's good. So we're going to jump to here, step into it. Um, we're going to start going down, I guess. It, so we have received packet. I have jumped into this. So let's just, um, I think it's F7 to, no, that actually killed DOSBox. I don't know what happened there. Um, so what we're going to do here is we're going to do, um, going to do, I think F7 to run to that location, F8, and then we're going to jump down to, um, current send buffer here. We're going to jump down to here. Here we are. So it's time to copy stuff. So what do we have here? We have in our CX 36 hexadecimal, which is probably 50. DX is 36. BX is 46 and AX is B3, B8. That's a little strange, isn't it? Um, That doesn't make that much sense. Why would BX be so low of a value? So we might actually just... Let's break around here um, where we do, where we get the packet, current receive packet. Um, we do that and let's break here. So. I think action break toggle F9. Then let's run and restart this program. All right. Here we go. So current receive packet. If we go to the next function, which uh, run step over, that's F10, run to cursor is F7. So let's just do run to cursor, huh? Um, let's run here. We get AX value is B078 and print F. Print F is returning a value. I think, um, oops. Uh oh, uh oh, uh oh. Um, so we're actually going to move AX to BX over here. And we're not going to touch AX because AX is just going to be used for functions and stuff. Um, so then we do that. AX, to, um, AX equals printf. AX equals ret. BX equals buff. Uh, move DX to AX, that's going to be the length. Then that calls current send buffer. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, and then that should be fine. Let's see if this works. Cool. 
hardcore, blimey, it works. What a ripper. Struth. So that's just for me assuming that. <laughs> yes, yeah, blimey. Send buffer only wrote sent. I think that's because it did send the packet. But now it's not waiting for new packets. The heck? It's driving stuff. I think that's waiting for another packet. Um, perhaps? No, it shouldn't be. It should return here with a ret, and then that should go back to receive new packet. Um, where are we at? Let's run this with our debugger again. Yes, quick, please. So how do you break? I guess we're just going to do run. Oh, it's working now, huh? That doesn't make me feel happy. Um, so response notice. Could not resolve your host name. It requests timed out using your IP address instead. And then we have the request here, which is whatcom exebot. Um, huh? So that's not doing too good, is it? In fact, it looks like maybe it's broken. Um, is it control F10 or F9 or no, I don't know how to break the debugger. Um, DOS, is there a send break? Um, CPU send break, debug, send break. Do you write ASM for speed or educational purposes? Educational purposes. Welcome to the chat, Paffin. Um, this whole bot is mostly for educational purposes. It doesn't make sense in any, any sense of the word. All right, but so that seems to have worked. Response, notice, request. It's still sending garbage sometimes. It sends It's sending garbage and then a good response. Hmm. So let's have a look at our code. We call current send buffer, which should not do any garbage sending. Yeah, I'd be your big boss, I think. Um, current send buffer should not send anything at all. Then we do send new buffer. Which, ah, okay. Hmm. I'm actually not that sure what's happening here. Uh, so we're going to have to look at this using the debugger. Or we should be able to figure out based on the tracing I've added. Um, because if we look at this kind of logically, if we do bot, it gets new packet length, current send buffer, send buffer sent. And that should output like packet in, packet out. But when we look at the actual network traffic. We have, um, let's do follow TCP stream. 
Um, we have a response. God Bolt Compiler Explorer. I've never heard of that. Let's check it out. It sounds like something for video games. Oh, I'm seeing this, yeah. Yeah, this is uh pretty useful. I mean, I haven't used it. Usually I just compile stuff. But um, it is good when you want to get in fights over stuff. Um, Uh, the only other stuff I've like recreationally written is like simmed, st uh, simmed stuff. I made like a ROT13 program that does like gigabytes of data a second using simmed. It was funny. Um, okay, so back here, response. We get a packet and then we send a request it's hard to tell who's the sender and who's not because both the source and the destination are the same. So we're going to have to go by the source port. So the port switch there and we send garbage. And then the response is that. Now, hmm, does this happen even if we don't send anything? Like, let's just dummy this out. Let's pretend that we can't send anything ever. Um, we always, oops, return three, so return three or whatever. Um, let's check if this just never works. If we don't, if we remove the sending code, does it still send stuff? I have a feeling this is linked with whatever's going on with it dropping packets too. Um, so let's see. Did that send a packet? No, that didn't send any packets, but we still missed an input packet. That's a little bit strange. I don't like that. And then it misses the second packet. Let's take a quick detour and look at why it's missing the second packet. So let's just I guess comment all this, I'll just move the code. Um, we're just going to print the code instead and then loop again. Let's go bot. So we get a notice and we get another notice, but it doesn't get that packet. Why is this? Is it because it's sleeping? Is there some kind of Perhaps it needs to always check for packets. Let's remove the getting new packets thing before we clock this strange. So let's restart our capture and do bot. No, still no packet. So that wasn't it, but I'm still going to comment it out.
So when we go receive new packet, what happens? It tries to find a packet and process it. Um, I think possibly one reason all this is broken is because we're not unconditionally processing packets. So what if we do process packets and then do that and we have a command that's just here and it's just for processing packets. because having it process packets in two places is kind of shaky at best. Um, let's see if this helps. No, that's going to deadlock. Um, no, that will deadlock. Um, but let's try processing packets outside of this loop as well. Would you rather have spiders or snakes? Neither can hurt you in any way. Sorry, I live in Australia. I don't want either of those. So we're processing all the packets here, but it's still not given us a packet. While socket incoming dot DQ. So something is fishy here. Something is very fishy because we are actually receiving packets. I think, I mean, we might not be. I don't want it to not be. Um, hmm. What if they were cute women? I don't know. Aren't some spiders? No, I guess women means human. Alright, so this is confusing me, because it works once, but then not again. And it seemed to work before with my Netcat program. So let's run Netcat and pretend we're an IRC server and connect to it as a bot. Would I make Bitcoin in assembly? No. Hi there. What's up? How are you doing? See, these packets seem to work fine. Um, but the IRC packets don't seem to work. In fact, what if we just undo all the code I've just changed? and we allow it to send stuff properly. You may not talk to my bot. Don't talk to me or my bot ever again. Undefined symbol process packets. Yeah, it'll do that. So, hi there. That's not sending anything back to me, probably because uh, echo um, ret. Uh, so let's just do call echo for now.
You're going to Hungry Jack's what you want. A veggie burger sounds pretty good. Hi. Outgoing hi. And then it quit. What a coward. Let's just put that in line. Put it back where it belongs, in the trash. Try a W make again, but of course it's going to hang because if this were a real machine, I'd have to reboot so many times and it would probably make me want to inspect my code a bit more. Bort, I wrote Bort, hi. Hello world. It's not printing anything here. In fact, it's just saying that the outgoing is happening. Why is that? Because I've dummied it out, of course. Because I am a dummy. We're going to name the bot Bort. I bought and it gives us garbage. Okay. Thanks bought and it gives us garbage. Please don't give me garbage bought. But it does have like a request and response. Outgoing thanks bought. So it's not that the outgoing is not working in that particular case. It's just that it doesn't work at all. So. Huh. What we might want to do Would I write Bezos Space Hotel and Assembly? No. Is it getting the packet length correct? So request... It's sending two at the same time. Hang on. All right. So this is a cooked line buffy here. So let's write... Hi, I'm totally cooked right now. And then we hit enter and we should get the same size back. Oh. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't say anything here. It sent stuff back, but it didn't write it. Hi there. What? So it's now not printing to the screen. Wh should you write assembly? No. I mean, you can if you want. Um, but it is not writing it to the screen. That's concerning to say the least. When it's doing things, it should write to the screen and not just pretend the screen is not there. Let's try again. So let's do some test str strings. Hello there, bot. And it gives us back garbage. And then it stops getting new packets. It sends stuff and then it stops getting new packets. It stops printing the getting new packets thing. But evidently it seems to... ...be doing something. I don't think we use send new packet. Um, so where is it now? Where would it be? 
I don't know where it would be. It's not supposed to be, it, I mean, it should be looping somewhere, right? So we do send buffer sent and then it returns and it should return here and then jump back to assembly loop and then call receive new packet and then receive new packet should be here. So the program is evidently frozen. So if we do hello world, we get back something which shouldn't be happening. So could we have corrupted the, the screen here? What if we do alt X? Does that stop it? Yes. So mm, what we're going to do is start ruling some stuff out. Um, instead of sending the buffer we get, um, we're just going to do We're not going to move anything and we're instead going to move ax um, hello buffer and that's just going to be hello world and that is one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven characters so we shall move eleven to dx I see my issue. <sighs> I am a coward and a fool. Um, it's printf again. So let's do... What would dx... It would be move... Um, ax would have to go into... I don't know. We don't have many uh, registers here, but let's just move AX back into BX and then move a move BX into AX there. A printout, printout's return statement is overriding our call to the buffer. Hi there. What's up, daddy -o? I'll be your beach babe. So that seems to be working now. I'll be your beach babe. <laughs> no one's going to get that. Not even Kaz, but it's from Danger 5. Claire's pretending to be cool. And she's uh, like, uh, I have to, I have to get undercover with them and pretend. And they're like, she's like, sup, daddy-o. And she jumps at the chance of being a beach babe. She's like, I'll be your beach babe. And she's like, too eager, too eager. Okay, I should start the IRC server. Would you be my, would I be your beach babe? Probably not. I don't want to be anyone's beach babe. <gasps> it's working. Kind of. I think we're missing something. So notice, notice, response, response. Could not resolve your host name. And we're not getting that. We're not getting that one. Um, why are we not getting notice? Could not resolve your host name. Request timed out. Why are we not getting that? Is it because of the length? It is a fairly big packet. 187 bytes of pure packet. Could that possibly be... a factor here? 
God, I'm starting to sound like Kermit the Peterson. All right. Old X quitting. And then it doesn't return. Oh. Or is that cleaning up? Cleaning up socket. Cleaning up socket. Because I know sometimes that takes a long time. And we'll have to see. So we are getting packets, but we're not getting this packet. That's 187 bytes long. And then we go to clean up. That doesn't hit the cleanup. What does it do? It compares AX to zero and if it jumps to no new, it returns. Which should put it here. So, pop BP. Why are we popping BP? I don't push anything there. That's not who I am. That's probably why, right? You know what? Let's just put that in line. So call new receive packet. Um, if we have a new packet. Um, We'll just jump if it's not zero to new packet. And we can do that in line like that. Hey, we can just return zero there. So if it's, if it's, if the comparison is true, then we'll just return. I think the new packet and then we'll just name this part send packet. And this part can be copy packet. This can be copy packet. And this part can be send packet. Pack, 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 yes. Let's see how that goes. Might shake things up a little bit. There we go. It quits when it needs to. So the last issue, what hangs the second time it launches? I don't understand why. Should we debug that? Probably not. I mean, is that because it's doing a weird interrupt dance? Is it filling up my dot X sessions errors? I don't know. Um, debug. Start DOSBox debugger. Show code overview. It's not what I want. Uh, show logging console. No, I don't have that open. Uh, I guess we could have one little try to see what's maybe happening with our bot. Oh, shit. Is it because I... No. I'm not hooking into any interrupts. I don't think. No, we need to focus on this other thing. You need, you got to make bug proof code or I should be ashamed. That is true. And it is annoying to have to restart DOSBox all the time. Okay, but. Oh, 
We're getting read underruns. Is that related? Um, let's go to debugger, start the debugger. Where are we at? We're in the interrupt table. All right. Okay. Yeah, close out, please. Um, so, is this an Any2K issue? Configuration tool, Any2000, help. Or is it a slurp issue? Yay, back from Hungry Jacks. Stroys. Uh, the only way to figure out what's going on here is probably just to, once again, dummy it. So let's open up netcat and let's run bot. Um, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So that's 20, 40, 60, 80. 100, and then we'll just do another 100. And it doesn't get it. Now, what if we get just, um, I suppose that's 100. What if it just gets 10? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. No. What about just A? No, so. Did that freeze? All right, let's try running the bot now. All right, we can't use the, the un, unknown call AX equals BFDE. Are we calling it? In, okay, we're gonna, we're gonna not worry about this. We're not going to worry about it. Although we will add a test to run our program multiple times <laughs> just to make sure it doesn't, uh, all right. So zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. We get that. What about 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 80, is that 90? I think it just keeled over because it got 90 packets. Nine, I got packets that were of length 90. And now it's not getting any packets. In fact, it looks like Slurp has killed over. Huh? What? Um, let's go back to MTCP. And we have Netcat here. Let's netcat target 127.0.0.1, um, 6667. And let's just try it in there to rule out that it's my code. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 20. Okay, so this is my code being broken. This is my burden to bear. And it somehow interacts. I feel like maybe we have two errors here. Or maybe we have one. Let's open up the DOSBox debugger and Let's, uh, 
see if we can debug why this thing is causing it to a second run to have issues. Alternately, let's have a peek at the net. Uh, I don't have the netcat code open. I mean, I was sure this worked. Let's replace this with the old bot code, just as a check. So, bot.back, and then we'll name this bot.cpp. We'll close it, open it again, then we'll do wmake. Um, touch bot.cpp. Um, delete bot.object, wmake. Uh, then there's the do nothing thing, which we're not going to mess about with. So let's quickly open up our bot.cpp again and display its contents. Send line, line buffer. We haven't even gotten to line buffering. Oh, this is a mess. Oh, I feel so, so ashamed. <sighs> it's all right, bud. Is it? It's just a, a, a grueling, grueling long process where like one step forward, two steps back. Um, it's okay though this is part of the process I just feel really bad for anyone watching, that's all. So, bot runs, if we do hi. Hi there. Hello.obj. Now, if we quit the bot, then run it again. Hi there. What's up? So that seems to be working fine. What about long inputs? That seems to kill this code too. But quitting does not break a things, does it? So my assembly code is doing two bugs. Well, no, my general code is doing two bugs. My assembly code is not cleaning up properly. Um, I'm not too sure what's happening there. I don't think it's writing over invalid memory. Um, we shall see. Let's just go back to our C code for, an, for a little bit and just try and think about what the heck's going on here. I have a feeling it's to do with the incoming .dq thing. Um, so let's grab the MTCP um, config thing. We have tracing enabled. Maybe we should search up how to actually use the tracing. That seems like a good idea. Um, Let's go to downloads. Do we still have MTCP here? Yeah. No. We're looking for the MTCP source code.
So let's see, user documentation. For the old one. So let's dump that there. Um, dev docs. So let's see, coding. Um, design, no, building, DOS tech. It might not be in here. Um, let's see, user docs. No, let's just jump into the code. So net cap is here. Let's see how it handles incoming packets. So it processes packets. No, that's not it. Um, it processes packets. No, that's waiting for a connection. So this is listening equals zero. All right, so over down here, it processes the packets, checks if the remote is closed first and processes. Shout FCDM closed already, then we will have to only take bytes from the socket for a limited time. Um, we're not using the receive interface. So it dequeues it, it copies it, then it writes the output, then it checks if the remote is closed. And it runs shutdown on the socket. Do I run shutdown on the socket? We want a free socket. We run socket close. Hmm. Why is it a data buff there? What the hell is a data buff? Oh, it defines a data buff. Okay. This code is a little confusing, but it uses shutdown for the socket. And then it closes the socket. So should I be calling shutdown on the socket? Um, perhaps Let's look into the socket thing. TCP, does this have socket close? Shut down? TCP shut read, TCP shut write. So I'm not too sure what shutdown is supposed to be used for. Let's just grab here for EQ. I think the website had the correct thing. I'm not sure. It had a guide. Power. Um, building changes, testing, uh, read me. So 
So socket shut down, maybe I need to do that. Um, so let's put that on the to-do. Maybe. I mean, it's unclear here. It seems like we need to be processing packets regardless. Like it processes packets here and process packets does a while and then it does clean up. That makes sense. Uh -huh. Okay, let's just test does the shutdown logic work here for the bot in this code. Hi there. Uh, we do alt x. And that quits. And then we do uh, hi there. Oops, I do it in the other terminal. Hi there. Hi again. Or X. And so the issue with this code is that it overflows a buffer. When does it overflow the buffer? That's a good question that I just asked myself. All right. Let's see. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 70. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So 9 does not work. Now does it go to back to 10? What is so special about 90? Let's try poking at it a little bit more. So Alt X, then we do bot again. I think. But. Yep, so that works. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. No, eight. So that's 80. Um, so one, two, three, actually, no, that's 81, four, five, six, seven, eight, two, three, four, that's 84, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, one, two, three, four, no, that's five, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So eighty nine does not work. So eighty five works, I think. Let's write this down. Eighty five, good, eighty nine, bad. So let's do bot one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. No, that's ten. Ah, bot one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six. So let's now just copy and paste that, and then we're going to write seven. Seven works, 87 works, 88 works, 89 does not. Do we, are we still capturing this from Wireshark? So that means that the packet of 155 is the issue. Packet um, 88 size, no wait, 89, I think. Size 155. 
faith works. Why? That's not what I want. Hmm. So let's try tracing MTCP. Now there is a debug documentation for this program. Um, dev docs debug set display. So we're going to do this. I didn't know I could just resize that. That's fine. Set debugging equals one, two, seven. Set log file equals log file. Let's set debugging to two, five, five. All right, run bot. And we're going to just start injecting some input. So we're going to do 88, 88, 87, and 89, then 88, then 87, then quit, and Alt X, indicating that. This might be a bug somewhere in MTCP or my hack of it. Oof. So let's go back to our bot code, which is honestly getting a little bit tiring, right? But uh, I'm sure like I had it working before, so it's not impossible. All right, so let's see, log file, log file. What's the W's mean? So we have 888 here, and then we send something, and then we get 87. What, 87, zero? What, what happens here? Okay, we're gonna have to compare this to this somehow by length because slurp, uh, our buddy slurp is a bit strange. So, reconnected, sending 54 bytes, dumping 54. Sending 142, dumping 142. So that's IP, that we're at TCP. Then we get our first boy of 88. So let's go to the loop back here and see if we can find that. It would be this. Okay. And then we, I think send an ACK, which should be 54 bytes. Um, I'm not sure how that works out. Sending 54 bytes, dumping 54. Uh, okay, whatever. Then it sends 142. And dumps 142. Then it receives 60. And dumps 60. Not too sure what these are. It could be that WireGuard is not showing them to me for some reason. All right, so next packet, length 40. Um, destination zero. Payload length zero. So that's an ACK, I guess. That might be this one. Maybe. Let's just keep going. Received 142 bytes. Payload length 88. And then it seems like we handle that packet, yes. I don't see any difference. And then 
we get some 88 here. We get our 87. I've got the bad numbers, yeah. So MTCP is processing these. 87, 88, 87. Is it? So 88, 88, 87, 87, 89. That's right, 88 works. It's 89 that doesn't work very well, isn't it? So we get payload length of negative 19,212. Length 40 for this payload. Um, what? That is small. But I don't know how much I trust all this. Um, so why would it throw away a packet? If it throws away a packet, then it's obviously going to, it's TCP, so it's obviously going to get into a death spiral, right? Yeah, because it doesn't want to lose packets. So let's just try and watch what happens. Here, let's do bot. Let's send it its 89 one. Oops. Netcat. Then we send it its 89 one. Um, where's our log file? It's reloading. Um, I think, yeah. It's a new log one there. And so we're going to just give it um, I guess, yeah, a single high, so high there, and then we're going to give it the, the big one, and then we'll see what happens. Then it acts it, because slurp acts it, so now slurp is trying to get the data to it. So, is there anything happening in MTCP land? So, line 255, is it just hanging? So it's at line 102, 256 and it doesn't seem to be getting any other packets. Um, let's just double check that. Yeah, so no other packets yet. And then we let's write hi there. Does it get more packets? It does. It's getting more packets, but it's not enqueuing them. Or is it? Huh? Wait, what? No socket for packet, sent reset. What? Hi again. So two fifty five, two hundred and fifty six. 
payload length nine. And that axe back, maybe this is a, <laughs> this is a friggin' headache, right? Um, what the heck? See, we have buff equals FFF zero. That's not good, is it? Payload length in the negative. Um, although it seems to always be in the negative. Okay. All right. So this seems. Uh, I don't know what to make of this. Like, it works with the Netcat program. Do you think dogs will be able to program in the future? I hope so. We're going to stare at our code here. At the moment, it's waiting for packets. Do we not have enough buffers? Oh, this is splitting my head open. Mm. Let's see if there's anything obviously wrong here. Size of incoming buffer, 128 plus 14. Is that 155? It's 142. Um, I know that's a lot less than a lot. You think you found the problem? None of this is in English. So what if we set the buffer length to 256 plus 14? I don't even remember why I said it to that. Yes, quit, please. Please quit. W make. Oh, W make. I do watch my VODs. I'm the only one that watches my VODs. I just watched them a while back. You watch my VODs? Oh, You don't need to watch them. Okay. So, if we do this now, does this kind of fix the issue? So, we do 89. So that kind of fixes it which signals something kind of super scary. Um, yeah, so I just made that bigger. Um, so how big does it go up to now? So previously, our thing was packet buff equals 142. So now it would be Uh, 256 plus 14, so 270. So, is there a linear relationship between that? Not linear. Um, so, like 142 minus 100 minus 88 equals 54. So, wait, there's 54 overhead, let's say. So, 270 minus 54. That would be 216 input would work. And that's what we would expect.
so let's try doing some input if I can find my terminal. You go away, you go away. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So we're going to try doing a hundred. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And that doesn't work. Okay, well, how long, how far does it work now? Then, if not a hundred, perhaps we'll try, I don't know, 89. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, minus one is 90. Um, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, that's 91. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Um, 92, 93, wait, no, 95. 95 works. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 98 works. Wait, that's less, I think. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Am I counting things wrong? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Um, so that would be a hundred and two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. So that's more. Um, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26. So this would be 271. Then, no, that does not work. So 271 does not work. What about 260? All right, what about 250? All right, I have to write it in here, 250. What about 240? We shall try that. This is technically 241. What about 230? 
fairly sure 230 worked at some point, right? It seemed like it did. Two thirty. What is happening with this? What is happening? Okay, um... All right, so let's do a times a hundred and just paste that in. So does a hundred work? Yeah. 200, does that work? Yeah. 220, does that work? No. Which is, uh, I guess, fine because we have our packet buffer length. Which there is overhead, I guess. I mean, I don't know. Let's search up what packet buffer length actually does. Um, so packet buffer length is the length of the packet buffers. And a packet buffer is the buffer for the incoming packet, I would imagine. But okay, what happens if we get a packet that is too big for the buffer? Something so thick and so bursting with energy that it is just too... God damn it. Is it not setting the... MTU or MSS or huh. Okay, what's my MTU? ETH MTU safe. And that should be an ETH display. ETH MTU min, ETH MTU safe, 576. Not so safe, is it? Not so safe. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to drop that back down to 128, bing, bang, boom. And we're going to set our MTU to 100. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Okay, hang on a second. I don't know why. I don't know why I'm so dense. I'm made of water. I'm gonna bite into this table. One sec. Ow. All right, let's try the bot. Now does this work? No, it doesn't. But I don't even know if that was what the MTU was. Um, I'm an expert. And I'm not going to hurt my teeth. My beautiful teeth. Have you seen my teeth? Okay. P 
param mtu param and I should mm, okay well all right um maybe okay they're white like the uh yeah go ahead explain to me how they're white like something oh wait okay mtcp dot configuration in the c drive let's set mtu to a hundred and I guess MSS to a hundred if we can. But. No, that does not help. Um, what? Um, what is happening here? Do you think love can bloom on the battlefield? What is wrong with you? Okay, let's check the log file again. Is it that the MTU is not the issue here? Because the maximum transmission is limited by our packet buffer. And it could be that we're just writing past the packet size. But that might be... Shit. Um... Let's head on down to drive C code log file. And we start up and we put MSS is MTU is a hundred MSS is 60. So we should not get any packets with packets longer than that. Still getting big packets. Is that because Slurp is setting the MTU? Okay, it is probably that, right? I mean, I'm not mad. This is entirely my fault. I even wrote about this in my freaking big wall of text here. Look. Something like that. Okay. Slurp. Um, where are you? Ethernet slurp. MTU equals a hundred. MRU equals a hundred. Bam. Bing bang bam. Slam jam. Slam jam. I mean, no, this, this doesn't make any sense why that would work. Oh, no, yeah, uh, Slurp must not be respecting the MTU that is reported by the packets, I guess. I'm going to have to nail this through my head before I start writing any more code. Slurp does not like me. I don't want to make it a personal issue, uh, but uh, Slurp hates me. Okay. Bam. Dropping long line. Hi there. Bing, bang, boom. We go. And we can probably just remove the MTU stuff. The, uh... I think we don't have to set the MTU in here. What do you think if you went on a date with Slurp? Do you think if you went on a date with Slurp? How about you read things before you type them? Okay, hang on a second. Hang on a minute. So we need to do that. Do we set the MTU and MSS here? What happens if we don't? I just got an email. 
Oh, Desecrate is live. We're going to be finishing up soon, so maybe we'll give her a raid. If Slurp slurped your... How about no? How about no? Okay, so that worked. That worked fine. Let's read what the log file says. Has it detected the MTU? Just based on slurp. Or is slurp throttling the MTU? Set log file equals log file. Or is it set logging? Let's just set logging equals, yeah. So let's do bot and let's do, hi there, my son. And let's read the log file. And what does it say at the top? MTU is 576, MSS is 536, but we're not gonna get packets that are really big, are we? because Slurp is going to chomp them up for us because Slurp is a proxy acting as Okay. Let's see what we get here. Um, len equals 80. So see how it's capping it order 80 now. Um So that should be fine. We're going to add a note to it as well. And we're going to load back our assembly bot and see if it work now. See if it work now. Understand? Add back our assembly. WMank. Um, then we're going to do del.botch.op and WMake there. Have a WMake as a treat, but Getting new packets. Hi there. What's up? This is going to probably break it. Oh, no. It works. No, it doesn't. It's frozen it. It's choked. Why? Why? Uh, probably because I need to set the actual values in the MTCP configuration for outgoing packets. So let's definitely set them here. And let's definitely test this um, bot. Copy, paste. No, that's not working either. But the previous bot code was working, wasn't it? Is this an issue with the bot code here or the bot or, let's just check here. Is this actually sending stuff? It was sending it, wasn't it? It was printing outgoing. It was buffering lines and printing it. So it has packets, send buffer is size 40. 
Incoming is size 40. Why are you not sending though? Why are you not sending? Let's just see if it works with IRC. Being an ornery little bot. Okay. It's got the same error. It's also sending registered there. What? Oh, thanks, Snapcraft. I needed that. So... Notice, looking up your host name, that gets... sent... Then we get back from that, looking up your host name. So that gets sent as two packets, I think. Then it gets new packets. Notice you have not re, and then it sends that back. Okay, that's a little weird. See, it says you have not registered. Which is a different length. And then I request that. I send it back at the same size. What gives? It's using size 40 for all the packet lengths. Um, still shouldn't be hanging, but that's... That's a bug. So let's go back and have a look. Where's the size being used? So we get the current receive packet. We move it to BX. I don't know. Move AX, wait, receive new packet. We're not removing, we're not putting the length in the right place. What the heck? So AX goes to DX, correct. Then we push AX and DX. We still have DX as the length. Then we send it and the length is Uh, it should be working fine. Huh? Something a bit weird is going on with that code. Um, so let's just set this back to bot.cpp. And just double check that this can handle big inputs. I want a known working thing, please. And let's connect it to the IRC server. Bot dot obj copy make um, 
hello.odg, let's delete that. Um, and so let's start over here and then run bot. Okay, and so notice, notice, this is hanging too. That's not replying. That's not going out. It says it's going out, but it's not going out. So does that mean if say, I don't know, what the heck? I mean, God. And now to do um bot.cp don't work with long line. I mean I think that's the issue still. Um and that's because it has a small buffer, but we shouldn't be No, we should the buffer size means that the maximum not the maximum size, but the, like the, uh, the packet size can be up to 88. What's this size here? Um, well, it gets sent to slurp and slurp would put it as, I don't know. Let's check again with DOSBox. I mean, it's unclear to me. Uh, this has gone on for way too long today, so we're just gonna bail here. Um, I'm gonna probably tinker with this off screen uh, because I feel really bad. I feel really, really bad. So hopefully in a few days I will be back and I will have answers for everyone. Don't? What do you mean don't? Don't fix this off screen or don't feel bad. Um, don't feel bad. You know what? Let's do set debugging equals 255. Set log logging equals log file. Del log file. And then let's just do bot. And that just puts it out on the screen. That's not good. Try to enqueue oversized segment. What? Is that why? Try to enqueue oversized segment. Oh. That shouldn't work. Because the buffer is bigger than the whatever. So that's my bad there. Okay. Um, all right. Okay, so that might actually be fine. Let's just try and debug this issue here then. Um, it seems like the buffer is just being sent directly as a TCP thing and that's just getting dropped because it's too big. Actually, let's test that. 
So let's set up uh, stop inspire set netcat. So basically, if we do bot, we send it a hello world. That should be fine. That's two packets outgoing hello world. Um, so what if we do hello there big world? What if we just copy this line here? Try to do oversized segment. So we've managed to read it in properly into the line buffer, but the outside buffer is too big. And it says length equals 20 there. Is that correct? Sending 54 bytes, dumping 45. So how much can we send out then? Um, let's do our classic AA test. Python three, um, A times, let's see, 40. So this will be 41. So 41, that works. What about uh, 51? That works. So the output is 100 minus the size of the TCP buffer. So maybe we'll try 80, 88. So let's try that. So that's too big. What about 78? So that works. No transmit buffer, big sad. Oh. Oh, big sad. So we've run out of buffers there because it's too big. So let's just go with the 78 again. Too big. Um, 68. Too big. How is it? Length is 69. Um, so 58. That's 59 but the buffer there isn't big enough. So how big is our output buffer able to be? That's length 40. So 41. Um, 42. Wait, what? 40. 40. 40, 40, 41. Wait, that's still 40. Oh, the length is 60. Uh, 59, 60. So it can't go for 63, I guess, 61. Wait, no, that's just 60. Why is it stopping at 60? Um, IP packets 60. It should be more than that, right? This is not fitting with my understanding. Um, perhaps I need to drop the MSS thing. Um, C drive mtcp.config and we'll drop the MSS because obviously I don't understand what's happening there. File save, file exit, bot, and we'll do that. Try to enqueue, it's still too big. Packet 70, sending 54, no wait, packet receiving 91. And then I guess it's trying to send 91. Can I do a 69? I did, you just missed it. I didn't talk about it. Uh, 
Wait, how long is this? Let's do 80. Let's try 80. Is that too big? Oversized segment. Uh. What is the MTU? Uh, well, maximum receive unit and maximum transmission unit. So I don't know what MSS is. Um, why is it trying? Why? What, what is an oversized segment? Let's try sixty. Oops, wrong window. 60 is too big. Well, that's 61. What about 50? So that's 51. Um, 52, 53. 54, 58, 59, um, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 0, 60, 60 is the maximum transmit unit here. Uh, so the input now works. MTU defines input. Um, output is limited to 60 bytes. Doesn't make much sense. Did I really just write 60? No, how much is that? I'm not doing, I would love to do a 420 for you, but we're not gonna do it. Yeah, so that's 60. But you have overhead. So is it possibly 20, 20 overhead? Huh? Huh? Okay, so if that's 60, then what's 100 negative 60? 40 bytes overhead. That's probably not right. Although the payload length here says 40. What's up with that? If I do this, and I put in a line. Okay, I have to set the log file properly here. So let's do this properly. So we have the bot, we have the log file up. We've connected, and so we're going to send it 60 bytes. And I'm going to confirm that is 60 bytes by doing A times 59, and the new line is the 60th byte. Why does Python 3 use GCC instead of Daddy Clang? The, 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 the compiler that it uses is decided by the distro. Okay, so that works correctly. So let's add one, add two, and let's just see what happens. So we just sent length 62, then length 80. What? 
Okay, so this is received length 80, I think. Or received 76. Okay, we're at 100, line 108. Let's say we do uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and new line is 10. So that should be 10 input and 10 output. Um, so I think we were around here, right? Tried to enqueue oversized segment. Ten isn't oversized, is it? Sorry, what? So. Is it unrelated to the size of the input? So you run out of a transmit buffer. That's fine. But is there an oversized segment? No, okay. Let's just delete log file. And we're going to try testing again. Just a little bit more. We'll go for 70. Ha ha, ha ha. There's a number there. You like numbers, son? Well, I guarantee you, you might like that one. You don't, why are you, why are you calling me daddy? I guess it's because I called you son, but you could just say dad. Okay, so here we are. We're going to dump in that. So it manages to receive that and buffer it. Despite it getting cut up into packets. So it receives packets of length 44. No. Connected. Length 80, payload length 40. Payload length 30. So 40 plus 30 is 70, I think. 420 is with you at night? That seems illegal. So we have two packets here. And the biggest input one with our payload is 80. And so we tried to send 80 out, but there's an overhead of like 40. So what's uh, 100 minus 40 would be 60. So let's try doing 59 plus one. Okay. So the output should be length 60, I think, length 40. Payload lengths. It's not really saying it to me. W and Q oversized. Okay, so then we get the input, which is length 80, payload length 40. And then 20, which is 40, 50, 60. Okay. And then we're going to send a payload out. And our length for our payload is it doesn't say anything about our payload. Or maybe this is it. Length 40. 
Um, what are you doing in my chat? This is why I don't stream for more than three hours. Things just go downhill. So if there's a 40 byte overhead. Okay, let's just search this up. Size of TCP header. Twenty bytes. Okay. So the minimum size is like twenty bytes according to this random website. We could check Wireshark to see. Um So the Ethernet header is the Ethernet plus IP header together are 21 in hex. Which is 33 and then you add the TCP to it. Uh, and you have the header. Where's some something with a timestamp? So the actual data starts around 42. So it's 41 overhead. 65 bytes of overhead. So 100 minus 65 means we could only theoretically transmit 35. But we can transmit more, can't we? My math must be very bad because I don't understand what the heck is happening. Okay. Why are you trying to go to my Google ads and stuff? Oh, DNS. Oh, DNS, DNS. Okay. Well, I'm confused. I'm thoroughly confused. And we'll be back next stream to be hopefully less confused. And I will tinker with this off stream and hopefully have a good explanation. Later, skater.